Well, hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Today is July 22nd, 2021, and welcome to the Promise Bible Devotional. Uh, thanks again for always inviting me into your personal space and allowing me the honor and the privilege of uh, studying God's Word and, 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 and doing this devotional and, and sharing what God has placed on my heart to be able to share during this time. Uh, I hope you are well. I hope everyone is doing good. I hope everybody's in a good place. And you're getting a lot out of this uh, Thursday night um, Bible devotional called The Promise. Uh, I will tell you up front that uh, it is time now for, Carol, you can come out, that you can uh, hit that subscribe button down below. That way you know when a video is posted. That's important because as we come back into things and my work opens up and there's 35,000 people in one place, it's going to be crazy, and, and work is already ramping up. I think people are starting to come back, and and uh, it's harder and harder for me to find time to be able to uh, dig out some study time, dig out some devotional time, dig into God's Word, and, and be able to prepare something, and then put it together for you, but also to be able to keep up uh, with you all. So this may not be happening on Thursday every single week, Gail, so... Uh, I need to change some of my patterns and, and change some of the things that uh, of timing that I have to do to make this happen. So hit the subscribe button and it will let you know when there's a video that's out there. So Carol, come on, say hello over here. What do you got to say for yourself? Hi. <laughs> um, that's our, it? <laughs> no, our air conditioner at the office has been broke all week. It was 84 today. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Oh, you're cooled down by now. And, um, you're not that hot no more. And we just got the memo or the email that we oh. have to start wearing masks again starting tomorrow at work. Oh, well, you don't go into office tomorrow. No, I'm home tomorrow. No, you have to wear it at home. And Caroline, I don't have If to... we lived in California, you'd have to wear your mask at home. No, I know. But anyway, it, it was Crazy. a good week. Well, um, they, they have not said at work that we need to have our masks on, even though if you're in class, you have to have your mask on. Okay. If you're out changing, going to eat, going to different classes, roaming around in the computer lab, we have no idea. Uh, you don't have to have your mask on, which makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. But I think um, as a person uh, that has to be cautious and the pandemic is happening, it's on my notes here to talk about it, that the De Delta variant is now 88% of all new cases, mostly with folks that have not been vaccinated or getting hit the worst, as, as you could imagine. Um, but we haven't had anything at work as far as telling us that we have to have our mask on. But yeah. as a personal person uh, that's going to try to do my best to protect myself and, and make wise, good choices, I'll be having my mask on. Uh, it's always been social distance, washing hands and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's just what we need to do. Pray for Barbara. So, she's, oh, Barbara, that's right. we got to put her on there. Yeah, she's we waiting. didn't find out how your... Um, she's still waiting on her test results. Test results, okay. Yeah, so, but she's not been feeling good. Barbara is not feeling good. She had a stress test done last Friday, and we're still waiting for results. I mean, come on, people. Yeah, and pray we're, for Carol, because she started a new job last night. And, and Carol... She said it was chaotic. <laughs> but she thinks job. it's going to be fun. And also pray for Harlan. I have them on the list here. So, Carol and Harlan, you guys are being prayed for as normal, as usual. We lift you guys up every single day, man. Yeah. I'm praying for God's wisdom and discernment, wisdom and knowledge from God for you guys moving forward. All right, I'm going to go start dinner. All right, sounds good. And Carol's probably wondering why, hey, she didn't have air on all day. and She's hot. It's 80 degrees in the office. And I'm the opposite. I am now outside. <laughs> it's 91. It's 86 <laughs> here. Said, you outside? Because I've been freezing my butt off all day. So I'm, I'm, I've been in the office. It's uh, 65 degrees. I can't wear my winter hat and I need a coat. So I'm glad to be outside. So when this is over, I will be right over there. If anybody needs me, I'll be right next to the water. So with all that being said, uh, prayer requests, like I said, for, for Carol with a new job, for Carol and Harlan, uh, my dad. For, for Barbara included, my, but my dad, let, let's talk about my dad for a couple of minutes. You know, he's, he's got some bad knees. He's got a heart that's uh, ticking a little weird. Um, doctors are suggesting, and dad, maybe you don't want me to share this, but I'm going to anyway, because what good is it if you have to go in to have a procedure done and you're telling everybody not to, you know, don't tell anybody. You know, that's basically telling us, Gail, admit this. This is like going into surgery on your own. And no, we're, we are a people of faith. We are going to pray you up. And on August 2nd, my dad, if he decides to go with this route, uh, will be going in for some, some heart procedure done. 
hopefully an outpatient basis, but uh, there is some complications. There could be things that happen. There, something bad could happen. But something bad could happen tomorrow, too. So we, we just don't know. So be praying for my dad and his de decision for August 2nd. Uh, as you know, Gail has been uh, under the weather. She hasn't been in Op House uh, in, in a couple of weeks, but she tunes in every week. And Gail, I'm, I'm just going to touch this just a little because... Uh, I think that you told somebody that you were in the hospital a little while ago, but everything is okay. They were able to fix the thing that they were you were worried about, and Gail is now back on the mend, so she is doing much better now. So, Gail, uh, shout out to you, man. I hope everything is uh, still going good for you. Miss Miss seeing you. Love you. Uh, Mary and Wayne, continue prayers for them. Uh, as of right now, I don't think that Wayne is able to, to drive. The doctor has not cleared him, but they are making progress. So if you would, just uh, shoot shoot them an email or shoot them a message on Facebook and let them know that you're praying for them. And if there's anything, you could drop a meal off or something for them. That, that would be great. Uh, continue prayers for Kyle. He is doing very well at his training and orientation. This is the second week. Last week was pretty tough ball being online because, you know, he's, he's like me. He can't sit still. So... I don't know. He's ready to climb roofs and poles and all kinds of stuff. So next week that begins at Duke Energy. So proud of you, Kyle. You keep keep pressing forward. And for Maddie, now Maddie uh, is uh, possibly have found a good spot for her for for work. So she is working at a local preschool here in Concord, and I hope it's a good fit. I mean, it sounds like you are really excited about this, and it's good to hear and and feel that excitement in your voice, Maddie. So we're proud of you. Uh, Mama C and I are going to continue praying for you, and it's nothing but good stuff ahead. Um, we got some some baby mamas on the list here, and there's always one. I go through the list because I don't walk around with my notes from last, last week. I, I'm rolling with this. So we got Katie, we got Maddie, we got Alex, we got Marissa, we got Miranda, and Abriella. Okay, Katie, keep her in prayers. Uh, she's having some some blood issues with iron and things like that not feeling great tired So keep her in prayer baby's fine, but keep her in prayer uh, Maddie's doing great baby's fine. Alex is having some some difficulties uh, With sickness and stuff Marissa. I think is good eh, Occasional vomit once in a while that that's normal risk. You're good. I have not heard uh, Any bad things or anything for Miranda and Abriella is coming close so if we do this in order, I think we will have uh, babies by Abriella, and then Alex, then Katie, then Maddie, then Marissa, then Miranda in that order. If everything works out and the, the bun in the oven is done. So continue prayers for, for you guys. And like I said, the pandemic is going in the wrong way. Uh, we have to make good choices, guys, and I know that, you know, it's exciting to get back and excited to go out to eat and go to this and go to that and do this and still got to be right. Even with the COVID vaccine, you can still get this thing. It, it protects you from being really sick. That's what the vaccine does. It doesn't protect you from getting it. So be cautious, be safe, be smart. OK, um, I want to I want to just shout out to uh, prayers for our West Coast that is having a drought that this generation has never seen and a f fires that are actually now affecting the East Coast in terms of air quality. So continue prayers for those folks out there and the firemen and women that are fighting that. And continue prayers for Cuba. We're not hearing too much about Cuba now after the uprising last week. And, and you know, freedom. It's worth everything for to have freedom and liberty. It's what this country was built on and based on that is slowly being degraded and taken away from us with the leadership and direction that that's in charge now so cuba we feel your pain the people there uh, freedom it's a it's a base necessity for for life it's what god wants from us for us is that freedom and uh, of course the olympics start this week and uh it, it's pretty exciting it's going to be different and you know dad you know how i feel about the olympics and the olympics now are completely different than what they were uh, back when I when I was close to that realm of, of uh, uh, judo and athletics and all that kind of stuff. So it's always exciting. I love the Olympic time. Uh, it's going to be weird. Some of our folks are not able to go. Some of them are not staying in uh, the village now. There's no fans. I mean, it's just going to be weird. But I pray that everyone stays well, stays safe, and we have a good Olympics. You know, it's, it's an honor to represent your country, and you should represent your country there. It's not a political statement at that time. 
Okay, you represent the con country that is sending you to represent them. So honor that. That's all I'm going to say about that. That that's a disgrace to do that kind of stuff. So let's pray and uh, we'll get started. I'm excited about tonight's message. It's 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 a it's a great uh, topic, but it's got some details that are pretty tough. So Lord, give me the strength and give me the power. Thank you for. Uh, the word that you've given me to share tonight. Thank you for your word, the example that Abram has recorded for us. And uh, Lord, just we just thank you for all the new babies that's coming, the, the struggles that, that we face. We thank you for them because they teach us something, Lord. They help us lean on you more, Lord. They help us understand your character and what you want for us, even in our struggles and uncertainty. Lord, I ask that you would put a blanket around everyone that was mentioned tonight. Keep Keep us safe, keep us moving forward, Lord, and keep us in your word. Lord, help us to be hungry and thirsty for you. This world desperately needs a shining light, a savior, a new leadership, a leadership that we have forgotten to stand strong with. And that leadership comes from you. And the basic principles uh, that we can lean on. Lord, give us the courage. Uh, it's something that is lacking today. Lord, we can gain that from you. We love you. We praise you. I pray that this message will go for someone this evening as this message is being shared and viewed and wherever it goes. Lord, I pray that it would be a blessing to someone and help someone along the way. Lord, it's all for your honor and your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone say amen. So if you were with us last week, um, we were in Genesis 16, so we'll be in Genesis 17 this week. But last week, we learned a very, very important lesson. And we learned something that Abram showed us that we need to apply in our own life because it is something that we mess up a lot as well. And that is patience. Last week we learned, as Abram shared with us, about patience. It is the one thing uh, to seek wisdom and knowledge from God. And it is another to know when to act, when to move, and when to enable into action wisdom and knowledge see God or Abram got tired of waiting God gave Abram a promise and Abram got tired of waiting and we can all relate to that we get tired of waiting we we are an instant especially now generation where we want instant gratification instant food instant faith instant church instant gratification we want instant stuff but sometimes waiting is hard especially when you wait a long time. Abram and his wife, Sarai, uh, thought it would be good, okay, this was the plan, they thought it would be good for Abram to sleep with Sarai's maidservant, Hagar. Yeah, that's the plan, right? With no child and a heavy burden of guilt and shame and embarrassment that she carried. She carried this every day in the society. They took matters and God's timing into their own hands. They made that choice. Hagar conceives a son. His name is Ishmael. It's the first person mentioned in God's word with a vision and a plan for his life. Ishmael, a plan for his life even before he was born. It's the first instance of this. Sarai and Hagar obviously not getting along in chapter 16. And Hagar leaves. She runs. She does like most people would do when a situation is really bad. And she takes off. And God's plan for her was to stay because God had a plan for her and for her son. So God tells her to repent, repent and go back. And then he reveals to her, you are the God who sees. And she has now seen the one who sees. And Abram is now 86 years old. And guess what? He's still waiting. Abram is 86 and he is still waiting. Genesis chapter 17. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. I, I am excited for this. So when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, 99. I just read that just before. Uh, Genesis 16 verse uh, 16 verse 16 says, Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him an Ishmael. And now 17, when Abram was 99 years old. Look at the waiting. 13 more years of waiting. 
13 years of waiting, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. Verse 2, I will confirm my covenant between me and you, and I will greatly increase your numbers. The promise. God appears. Abram, 25 years ago, when he left Haran, back in chapter 12, he has been waiting all this time. All this time. Abram is now 99. He was 75 when he left. And now he's 99 years old. 25 years of waiting on God's promise. That is a long time. You think we've had difficulties waiting. Abram's got 25 years under his belt. He's 99 years old. That's 13 years of the last time that God spoke to Abram. 13 years. Verse, or chapter 16 to chapter 17. God makes an announcement with a declaration. Everyone say declaration. Gail, he makes a declaration. I am God Almighty. And then there's a revelation. I am God Almighty and then the expectation. There's two parts to this. There's a revelation and an expectation. God sets the tone. He announces who he is and then sets the expectation. Walk before me and be blameless. That's the expectation. See, blameless means whole. God wanted all of Abram. He wanted all of Abram whole. He wanted all of him. Total commitment. And has that at all changed from then until now? God wants all of us. He doesn't want a part of us. He wants all of us, Mary, Gail, Patty, Dad, Maddie, Carol. He wants all of us. God wants us complete. He wants us in full. He wants us blameless before Him, in Him. Something our society and part-time Christians are doing today. That's them. God wants all He wants to do in and through us if we're half-hearted. Imagine what He could do if we were all in. That's society today. We do go to church on Sunday and we're a Sunday Christian. And then we go about our days. We go about our week the way we were. We are only half in. We may not even be half in. We might be partly in. See, God wanted a total commitment from Abraham. From Abram. Genesis 17. Let's continue. Verse 3. Abram fell face down, and God said to him, As far as me, or as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Verse 6, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. That's important. Verse 7, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants. Everyone say your. Your descendants after you for the generations to come. To be your God. Everyone underline. If you got your Bibles open, underline it. To be your God. Let me read that one more time because that's important. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. To be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after after you and I will everyone say I will that's a declaration there I will be their God there's no question about it there's no there's nothing you can do about it I will be their God 13 years as scripture records no word from God it's not a single visit and now we have this Abram a man of great faith as we know him as he is re he is regarded as a man of great faith. Didn't do this. He didn't become this overnight. It takes time. It takes God's time. And it takes God's work in him to show us this. Abram didn't do this overnight. It took time. It takes time in all of us, in me and in you. It takes time to build this faith. Years of trusting God, Abram sat. 13 years of waiting. In the quiet, the mundane moments, 
probably routine, Gail, just, just going through, mundane, quiet. God was here. He gave me a promise and 13 years of waiting. He was trusting God. And maybe only a few encounters during this time. 13 years of building his faith. 13 years with a moment. Maybe during this time that maybe God forgot about Abel. And maybe you're feeling that today. Maybe you're in a place now where you've been seeking God and seeking healing and seeking answers and seeking guidance and seeking wisdom. And what do I do now? And now all of a sudden, this close relationship that you felt is now quiet. And there's a season of time where there's nothing and God doesn't give you anything. And it feels like you're just going through the motions and, and your, your faith is, is wavering. And that's where Abram is at. 13 years of waiting. God, have you forgotten about me? And then Abram falls on, on his face. This is a position of honor and submission. Abram, verse 3, fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. See, this position of falling on your face is, is honor and submission. It's a position of respect in front of God Almighty. God changes Abram to Abraham. It's a new name. God gives him a new name, a new identity, a new declaration for Abraham. It's a new announcement that Abraham gets to tell everyone. It's a new beginning. It's a move forward. The promise is now in motion. We've been talking about this promise. And now, finally, after all this waiting, the, motion, the promise is now in motion. It's time to leave the past whatever that looks like, and write a new chapter. And that's true for you today as well, for Abram. It's true for us that we can be called something new, that God does rename us, that there is a new chapter. It is time. See, Abram, father of many, father of many, remember that. Still, in this moment, right now where Abram is at, there is no child. He's not a father of one, from God. Yes, he has got Ishmael, but Ishmael is not the one. It's not the promise. The promise has not yet come. He is not a father of the promise. Abraham, the name means father of many nations. It's crazy to have a name like this and to be able to share this. God changed the name of many in scripture. Think about Jacob. They God changed his name to Israel. Simon became Peter. He gives us a new name, a new identity. He calls us saint, Gail. He calls us righteous. He calls us chosen. He calls us the royal priesthood and sons of God. Revelation 2.17 says a new name for every believer. A new name, a new identity, a new beginning, a new start. God's long-delayed promise to Abram, now Abraham... Abraham, the story gets even better. The story, the promise, gets even greater, Uncle Jimmy. Kayla, it gets even greater. God now declared Abraham the father of nations. Kings would come in his descendant and from his family tree. Kings. God also declares that his promise to Abraham would be passed down to his generations. His descendants, so not even born yet, would be blessed by the promise. An everlasting possession. A promise to all the Jewish people. It's the promise. Kings. Okay? Kings would come from his descendants. So let's go to chat, uh, verse 9. Verse 9. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Okay? Mm. Gail, every male among you shall be circumcised. Verse 11. Mm. You are to undergo circumcision. Mm. And it will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Verse 12. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. Verse 13. Mm. 
whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. It's a wonderful, beautiful promise that God gives Abram with a tough detail. That's a tough detail. This is where it gets messy. And you know, I have honestly have not heard many sermons on circumcision. It's a tough, tough thing to talk about. It's a tough thing to talk about removing skin from the penis. I said that in a message. That's what force, that's what that is doing. Removing skin from the penis. Eight days old. Eight. A baby. Eight days old. And still, this practice is done today in most parts of the world. And you know, maybe there's some health reasons. There's health and benefits of being clean. Uh, there's the transmission of germs and disease to a woman from this. There are benefits to this procedure. But there's more. We can't stop right here because there's way more. There's more. Everyone say more. There's more than just those health benefits. Okay? I want everybody to take a deep breath because this is a touchy subject. I don't really care to talk about it, but I have to. Are you ready? Are you, are you ready to continue? There is more. To God, it represents the seed. Okay? It's the seed of Abraham that there was a defilement of the flesh which, which must forever be taken away or man would remain impure and out of covenant with God. That's from Charles Spurgeon. Okay, He shared that. He gave me that to say to wrap that part up because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it. Okay, It's the seed of Abraham that there was a defilement of the flesh which must forever be taken away or man will remain impure and out of covenant with God. And you know, that that reminds me uh, about, uh, you know, the Garden of Eden and when God made Adam and Eve and he created this tree. And in the tree in the garden known as the knowledge of good and evil, it was put in the garden so that there could be no true obedience unless there was freedom to disobey. It was put there with a purpose so that we could choose moving forward or not. It was there to choose our obedience for freedom to disobey. Freedom and free will is at the core of what we were created to be. And that's what circumcision is. It's taking that away. It's that reminder. So for the very first time, since God has given Abram, Abraham the promise, it's the first time that God has given Abraham something to do. Think about it. This is the first time that God has given him something to do. He has something to do. That's important. See, God chose this for many reasons. Circumcision was unknown in the world at this time. There are hygiene reasons. There is the cutting of the flesh. And it deals with with procreation it's a reminder of the seed of Abraham like I said just before that I didn't mention I kind of said it but I didn't finish the sentence even though I wanted to this deals with the procreation it's a reminder of the seed of Abraham that would eventually bring the Messiah oh that's huge that's major now you know the struggle and the reasons why God has given Abraham all of this and why he must do this. Okay? In the Old Testament, it was circumcision. The New Testament, Gail, is baptism. Connie, it's baptism. All leading to the Messiah. That's why we do these things. We have something to do. We should never turn those things away. Now, eight days old, we probably don't have a choice. But Old Testament, New Testament, baptism. If you are professing your faith, do not turn that down. Okay? 
It's an outward display of our faith. It's the promise. It's the covenant with God. Circumcision and baptism, don't miss this, do not save us. Let me say that again because that's important. Circumcision and baptism do not save us. Only God can save us. And through the centuries, the Jews began to trust more in the sign of the covenant than in the God of the covenant. They put more weight on the circumcision. Today, we put probably too much weight, way more weight on the baptism than actually the baptism of God. It's not the event that saves us, folks. It's the love. Uh, Galatians 5, 6 says, Faith working through love is what saves us. Genesis 7, 15. Let's keep a little bit further, okay? God also said to Abram, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings, kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. Abraham on his face again, and he laughed. Everyone say he laughed because that's important. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man 100 years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. He remembered Ishmael in this promise moving forward. He didn't want to leave Ishmael out. He wanted to include his son. And then God said, yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him. Everyone say with him. That's the family line. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. Verse 21, but, everyone say but, but my covenant will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. Now we got a time frame. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. Verse 23, on that very day, no time to waste, didn't put it off, didn't sleep on it, didn't pray about it. He had something to do. And on that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born in his household or bought with his money, every male in his household and, and circumcised them as God told him to do. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. Uh, and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that same day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household or bought from a foreigner, was circumcised with him. Chapter 17. Sarai gets a new name. Sarah means noble woman. A hundred years and 90 years of age. Let's turn to Romans 4, if you would. Romans 4. I want to read you something. And I know I'm going over, but this is, this is important. Romans 4. I should have uh, put it in a bookmark, but I didn't. So I'm on the fly here. Romans 4, verse 17 through 21. 17 through 21. And this is what Paul says about Abraham and Sarah. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives his life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, verse 18, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, a hundred years old, since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave God the glory, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. It's the promise. God's promised son. The promise gave him the promised son in Isaac. And Isaac 
because he laughed when God told him this. Isaac's name means laughter. And Isaac would bring much joy to his parents. And also because Abram laughed when God uh, shared him what would come to pass. Abram asks about Ishmael and God promises uh, for him as well. He would bless him, but the covenant, don't miss this, only goes through the son to come, the son of the promise, Isaac. Abraham circumcised his family in obedience, much like baptism today. It's professing our faith in Christ. Lord, we thank you for today's message. We thank you for the obedience, the, the waiting, whether it was patiently or not, Lord, you still have a plan, even though we get out of tune and out of sync and out of timing with the things that you have for us. Lord, you want to bless us. Help us to remain faithful and strong and trusting and patiently waiting on your move, that your word, to that your signal, whatever that is that we are waiting for for us. Lord, we wait on you. Lord, there is a time and season for everything. There's a time to move. There's a time to be still. There's a time to hope and there's a time to pray. Lord, there's a time to give up and there's also a time to have great faith. Lord, I pray for whoever is listening to this message, Lord, that they would lean in on you, that they would pause and examine what situation or what their need is, and that they would lean in on you on, on your behalf. Lord, our, our nation needs you right now. We need some leadership. We need a vision. We need some promise. We, we need to get back to our roots, just like uh, Abram had did. Lord, help us get that. Bring up a new leader, one full of faith and boldness. Lord, help us with that. Help us get through this week. Help us get through the next season of whatever this virus thing is going to look like, the next season of healing, the next season of sickness, the next certain season of uncertainty. Lord, help us. Bind us together. Group us together so that we can know the promise that you have for us. Give us a new name. We are called righteous that your son chosen. I love that. That is awesome. And you know, I'll say all that in prayer uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. But I do want to say one other thing. And I think uh, going back to my Panthers days, the Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton, he's got a son named Chosen. And I never understood that name that he gave his son until this week that's a cool name good going cam i hope you guys are well i hope you guys stay safe make good choices stay in god's word and keep trusting if you're waiting on something continue to wait don't take things into your own hands and your own timing god's got the perfect move coming up he's got the answer he's got the miracle for you so hang in there i love you guys i'll see you guys soon peace